I don't know whether this is just like a anything you can do, we can do better kind of situation, but it's interesting that it's a first pick since it's something that, you know, can be countered, but I, I think it plays into the conversation we were having in the last draft where if they can flex it to weapon power, the counters to CP Petal are not necessarily the same as heroes. Yeah, and, and some of the counters to Crystal Petal are weak to a weapon pedal, so it's it's kind of interesting that you know pedal would used to only be specifically a counter pick to crawl, can now maybe start to be used a little bit more you know a, a little bit more leniently by picking it up early. There's going to be the adagio as well, so this is going to be a very very interesting draft. I'm super curious to see how Tribe are going to run this This is out. an Adagio captain that's going to be on max screen most likely. And the reason why they picked it up is to deny it from Cloud9. You don't want to give Adagio grace to any team, especially not Cloud9. How how well Old School plays the Adagio pick and how well it combines with uh, grace. The synergy between the two uh, heroes is extremely high. So I expect this to be a captain roamer and it will probably go on max screen. All right, well, Idris going to be locked on in for Cloud9. We fully expect that to go over to Old School in the lane. Wouldn't be surprised to see that CP as well. And we've got that classic Idris and Grace combo that can be just so deadly. Yeah, it's really devastating to deal with. And obviously, if it goes to the Crystal Idris in the late game, can take care of Petal very effectively, uh, assuming it Not does end up being pedal. a crystal pedal. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, there's, it'll be, I mean, you can still take care of pedal very For effectively sure. because pedal is so squishy. Like if you go weapon, she's very vulnerable, doesn't have a whole lot of health, doesn't have much defenses. And if you just get a chakra monitor, that's going to be half her health gone in the late game. So uh, either way, it's still, Idris is just such a strong pick right now. It for sure is. Uh, the only thing that could happen is if Petal does go up in power, she has a huge advantage mid-game where her damage output can delete CP Idris. Glaive comes out as the final pick for Cloud9, and this already looks like a lot more serious draft and composition from Cloud9. CP Idris on lane with Glaive, weapon power in the jungle, and a Grace as the captain for Gabe Vizzle. It's well-rounded, it has early game aggression with the gank potential coming out from Glaive, and it has extremely strong late game scaling with the CP Idris and the Grace sustain. The one thing that could be a concern for Cloud9 is when you go into a pedal as a Glaive, it's actually extremely easy to accidentally tap one of her Munions when you afterburn in instead of the pedal. Uh, that's really the only thing I can think of that could cause a problem for them in this composition. And it's such a minor thing that it's it it's feels weird saying that that's their biggest issue. So my question is, do we see Tribe now lock in the Rhyme since we have two essentially melee? The answer is yes, they are going to lock in this Rhyme. It is going to be that Captain Adagio that you were talking about, Zoro, alongside potentially another weapon pedal. I, I think it definitely will be a weapon power right. pedal. Um, the biggest strength Tribe going to have are their early game and their mid game. If they don't abuse it enough, if they don't get enough of a lead, C9 will definitely overtake the game. At the same time, Cloud9 have a little bit of tools to fight back with the Glaive afterburns and the ganking potential. Mm -hmm. It can go either way. All right, I'm excited to see how this Grace Idris uh, Glaive comes into play as well. A lot of damage, a lot of front-loaded damage can come through later on into the game. It is just about time to jump into this one, though. Hashtag Vainglory on Twitter. Let us know whether you believe Tribe can pull themselves back into this series. It's time to pass it over to our casters once again, though, and get into game number two. <laughs> Thank you very much, Munch. And that's right, Cloud9 versus Tribe here. we got our game two, and hopefully Tribe have been able to shake off that first devastating loss here. They've picked up the pedal themselves, Sean. They have picked up the pedal themselves. I want to see this weapon power pedal and all its potential. Go ahead. Why not? Copy the builds. Let's see what the communication is, the strategy that holds up for Tribe. Uh, we're going to have to see Rhyme and uh, Max Green here on this Adagio protect the pedal. Uh... And Gabe's diving in. Interesting situation here. Dianzio knocked back. He's got the healing flask, but he's first blooded immediately. C9 striking like lightning. T Tigers. He's on to old school. The Winter Spire's doing good damage. Max Green zoned out towards the east side. Now T Tiger's left for his zone in a three versus one situation. He's just gonna spin circles, throwing Winter Spires, and C9 respected enough to drop back. You gotta respect the, the weapon power pedal, but you, you I don't know if it's the same in the hands of tribes. C9, they've shown us two games in a row with this weapon power pedal doing so much work, but uh, uh, coming in here with the glaive, 
Uh, we saw a different glaive out of Xenotech yesterday, but this glaive able to come in, reposition that pedal, and uh, just cleave a path into uh, into the game win. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's gap closers on every hero that C9 has drafted up. Like the captain, jungler, and carry can all get onto the, the pedal. And that was kind of where I was looking at it last game. Like you had the weapon jewel for Zeo. And if, if he can get onto the pedal, he'll probably blow her up. But they couldn't do that. I think this game C9 should probably find the openings. Yeah, I think they will too. And we all these gap closers are gonna really work to their advantage. And not only do they have the gap closers, but they can the benediction like that can go ahead and slow up the pedal as well and provide that holy shield, that protection for the remaining members of C9. Zeo holding down the lane by himself while down in the jungle. Tiggs and Max Green able to secure up the Elder Treant. Max Green with the secure middle area of the map. He moves up to go babysit Zeo a little bit, give him some healing, a little bit of buff. Make it easier for him to go ahead and last hit. Now, Zeo's already used that healing flask early on in the game, so it's currently on cooldown. If, if he was engaged on, he'd probably go down. Yeah, I, we're just going to have to see Zeo as the key to winning this game for Tribe right now. Uh, no pressure, man! Oh, Zeo's just going to have to farm up, and there's an engage here. Yeah, Tiggs with the, the winds not chill enough there to find the root in C9. Repositioned back into a better place. Joseph's made his way up into the lane. Look at oh man, this glaive skin is just monstrous. I actually love this skin right here. And uh, of course, when you see Joseph on that glaive, it just puts fear in your heart. I love it too. And I'm actually what I'm actually uh, a captain main myself. So getting the glaive and using it to reposition and with the utility that comes out of it, it's very very good. You know, obviously we see Gabe Bizzle as the Grace Captain here, but. Uh, yeah, Glaive's got a lot in his kit that can really work for engaging, uh, disengaging, repositioning uh, other heroes on the uh, the enemy team with that afterburn. Tiggs is taking this uh, time to go ahead and take the uh, backs away from C9, so T-Tiger's able to actually sneak back over there. It's a good job for him. Yeah, if you actually look over at uh, Gabe Vizzle, we, we do see more of that aggression with that Dragon Blood contract coming out for him. That's, that's again, going to allow for a lot of engage onto uh, this Weapon Power Pedal. And that's, if they can just shut down this Weapon Power Pedal, that's going to be a good win for C9. And I feel like C9, in their scrims, they're practicing, they may have come across, you know, the, the fact that someone's going to take the Weapon Power Pedal away from us, and they know the build, what, what are we going to do about it? So they probably prefer, prepare for this situation and uh, we're gonna see the outcome here pretty soon yeah i think you have to assume uh that it's probably played out that way and it, with the composition it really does make sense now down in the jungle t tigers have been spotted out dragon blood contract applied he had the root there onto joseph they're trading damage benediction up towards the lane as tribe collapsed down as a unit joseph just kind of hanging out towards the safety of his crystal sentry and Stribe can't find a kill this is the fountain now coming out for max green and Tribe kind of starting to hit a, a little power spikes yeah, they're trying to. They're they're gonna hit those power spikes. We we do have a fountain on both. Uh, well, actually, we don't have one yet for Dave Vizzle, uh, but he's working towards it. And a Sora Blade actually coming out for Dienzio. That's gonna allow this weapon power pedal to do a lot of damage. We do see T Tigers working towards that uh, Shatter Glass. It looks like, and he's sitting on about a thousand. The Idris just hit his power spike with that Shatter Glass. He's going to be able to get those ranged auto attacks in there and nice. do a lot of burst damage with those Chakrams. Yeah, of course, the hitting the di unlocking the Divergent Paths is extremely useful for the Idris. So he's got the ranged attacks now. Let's see. Try, trying to contest, taking away the healing camp in the mid here. But swing and a miss on that. They're right back up into the lane. And of course, Old School drops down with Joseph into the jungle. But they're kind of getting trolled out because the camps haven't spawned yet. So Old School actually wasting time there. Yeah, wasting a little bit of time there. Look look over it. There's a lot of aggression here. And Gabe Bills is going in. Dragon Blood contract on three. Tiggs getting lit up. The afterburn. Tiggs not completely back. He wants Old School. He stays alive, but not long enough. And Dienzio really just hanging out on the back edge of this fight, can't apply enough damage. Cloud9, find another kill. Oh man, see the thing with Rhyme is that he's got to go in there, he likes to be on top of these team fights. So having him go in too deep versus the members of C9 feels pretty bad, man. He's too early in game right now and he needs to be able to uh, get that fortified health up if he's going to be able to sustain in these team fights. Yeah, I think also, I mean, just kind of like poor timing for him or unfortunate timing that he would have wished uh, to move up there and not get blown up immediately with all of that damage. And Rhymes is kind of, it's a different story if you go into the fight with 50% health versus, you know, 75 up to 80 or, you know, towards 100%.
We do see D'Enzio working on that sharpshooter. It looks like he's going to be going towards that. Uh, he's got Blazing Salvo now, so he's probably going to be working towards that attack speed. Tornado trigger coming our way. That's what's going to allow another big power spike. Uh -oh. They're working on this gold miner. Yo, this gold miner is potentially going to get stolen away here. Hey, Zeo is able to secure that, but the fight is on. Zeo jumps onto Joseph. Joseph gets the divine intervention, knocks Zeo back with that afterburn. Old school shimmer striking around Zeo with the reflex down into the brush. Gabe Bizzle gets him with the holy nova. <laughs> Old school, one more attack. He'll go down. T Tigers has got it. They're going to lose Max Green and now T Tigers against two here. We believe in you, T-Tigers, you can do it. Joseph, I think he popped that healing flask just now, so he's gonna continue to get regen. T-Tigers T -Tigers has to land. His Winter Spires, no he won't. Joseph has the afterburn, they have the kill. And this is gonna put C9 up five to one, seven minutes in. Five to one, seven minutes in, Humanist. And uh, the gold's pretty even right now for the net worth, but what I saw in that team fight was I love Joseph waiting for D'Enzio to trampoline away. We know in the previous matches that we've seen that pedal trampolining away is one of the big moves to reposition and continue doing damage. But because I Love Joseph knew it was coming out, he repositioned with the punt from the afterburn and they just continued to aggress upon D'Enzio, took him out, and therefore the rest of the members of Tribe fell. I think that's really smart predictive play. And like you said, they're playing it to a high level, so they know how to counter it out. And, and it's just really coming uh, into true form for these guys right now. I think C9 just such an incredible team. I did expect Tribe to put up a little bit better of a fight than what we've seen in game one and thus far in game two. We do see a Crucible on Max Green right now, so if he's going to make anything happen as the captain, he's going to have to use that Fountain, use the Crucible in a timely manner, block those afterburn punts. Once he's able to block those and keep D'Enzio healthy, we're going to probably be able to see a little bit of a turnaround here from Tribe. It feels like Zeo is just so far behind right now, though. Like compared to the item spikes in game one, uh, coming out of old school, like he he's doing okay in a farm. He's not doing very good, very great in his farm, but he's also not getting the rotations through the jungle, which is putting him a little bit behind. Yeah, if you actually look at his CS right now, it's actually pretty even with old school, but uh, that feels bad, man, because I, I don't know if they're going to be able to keep this up for very long. Well, right now, Cloud9 collapsing down upon Tribe. Dragon Blood contract applied to T Tigers. C9 can look to just kind of chip at this turret if they choose, or maybe just wait for someone to get out of position, reposition them with the the afterburn, or just go ahead and have everybody dive on them all at once. Move down into the tri brush. He'll pop off that scout trap there. So Max realizes how C9 have rotated, but they don't currently have vision. And there's no flare for Max. If they want to walk in there, they kind of have to face check the brush. My Chakram's coming out from old school. You have to respect the damage coming out. He's going for the AC next. Yeah, he's going for that alternating current. That's going to allow him to do so much quick damage with these ranged auto attacks coming out of uh, the CP Idris. They're working on this gold miner now. Yeah, Tribe realize what's going on. They're going to move in here. Max Green, what's the play? They get the afterburn back on the T-Tigers. That's not Zeo. Zeo's free to do damage. T-Tigers is going to stay alive. He gets the fountain. Oh, a big burst of judgment comes through from Max Green. And Gabe Vizzle's dropping low. They've got two. A double kill coming through for Zeo. He trampolines forward. He wants more. Is he going to get it, Sean? Yeah, he's got that spontaneous combustion. Old School's trying to find the damage. Gold Miner's even working for Cloud9. But they're going to find the ace. They're going to get the Gold Miner as well. And I bet you they're going to move up into the lane and take a turret here. Wow, what an ace coming out of Tribe. Really well done. Let's go ahead and take a look at that replay. So we saw here that C9 working on that gold miner, throwing a little Chakram dance going on. Uh, but uh, once we got in there, we did see the punt. But uh, we this is what they forgot about. They forgot about the NCO. He's there in the tri-brush brush, doing so much damage, continuing to hit up the members of C9. And because they forgot Double about kill. him this time, they didn't save the afterburn for him. It was a win for Tribe. Really well played in that team fight. Yeah, that felt like night and day Triple compared kill. to how C9 were approaching the fights previously. Joseph was showing great patience before, but he immediately after burned T-Tigers back. And with that Eve of Harvest, with the healing coming out immediately from Max, they kept the, the Rhyme alive so beautiful. Now, Tribe, definitely a huge momentum swing. They have the net worth advantage. They're down four to six overall in the kills, but... This is anybody's game at this point. Tribe, how do you want to play this out? T-Tigers zoning with Winter Spires, trampoline forward from Zio onto old school. Afterburn kind of 
Boondock Zeal into a better position. Holy Nova. Gabe winds up to find intervention out on Joseph, keeping this Glaive nice and alive. Old school. He's able to get back with a Shiver Strike. He's got the positioning that he's looking for. Zeal, you're in trouble, my friend. He gets the heal, but I don't think he tried. Yes, he can. Oh, the pedal's so good. Zeal, does he have the damage on the Gabe Missile? Yeah, Whoa. he's got it. Triple kill as Tribe come racing back into this game. Anything you can do, I can, I do, can better. do better. That's the Ezio right now. Feels pretty good, man. Complete opposite. And this this turret is going down with these ace buff minions and all these attacks coming out of this pedal. Really well done. Oh my goodness. And there, uh, you, if you're uh, C9 right now, feels pretty bad, man, that they took that weapon power pedal away from you and they're kind of schooling you with it. Schooling? Well, uh, maybe. I mean... Kills this are is a seven. very even game. Even though Tribe are putting together a couple fights, this could very easily go the other way. I mean, that came down to, it, it was like one auto attack coming, I mean, old school or Zeo. Like, whoever got it first was going to find the kill there. Yeah, and I love Joseph too. What he actually did, you you pointed it out in history in that team fight, was he punted Dienzio back. You don't want to punt Dienzio back. You want to punt him into your yes. teammates so that you can do even more heavy damage on him, just allowing the pedal to kite from you. Ooh, this looks like it could be an engage. Flare is out. Max is right there. He's going to wind up with the burst of judgment. Zio, he's back with the trampoline. Spontaneous combustion coming out. Old school's looking for Zio. Zio dropping some stutter step. It's not enough. Divine intervention keeps Joseph alive. Max Green and T Tigers have to juggle this damage. They're going to hang around here. T Tigers, he's on to old school. He's got one. He's looking for more. Joseph doesn't have the damage to trade with T Tigers like that. Whoa, the fortified health coming out from this rhyme is unbelievable. And that time, we actually saw old school focus down Dienzio, throwing out those ranged auto attacks, and that was Dienzio's downfall right there. Really well played. The alternating current, Shatter Glass is a really good power spike for old school. And if, they, if he can continue to do that, kite around the fight, reposition with those shimmer strikes, he's going to be able to take down Dienzio. Yeah, he absolutely will be, but right now, Tribe playing these fights very well. Also, you know, the thing is, Rhyme himself is very durable. He has a lot of sustain when he builds in with his Eve, but paired up with the Adagio and Max Green's mechanical abilities and reflexes, it is so incredibly hard to take him down. T-Tiger is doing great work. Zeo is just getting stronger and stronger. He's going for that third crit item now. You'd expect Tyrant's Monocle to come out here, and plus an infusion, these guys are completely ready to go. Yeah, they're completely ready to go. Uh, six kills, three deaths on Dienzio right now. Oh man, I I'm, I'm excited to see what the rest of this game has. Uh, we're one minute away from the Kraken spawning onto the Halcyon Fold. 4,000 gold lead in advantage of uh, the side of Tribe. But uh, yeah, it, it still could all change if if old school continues to reposition with shroud stepping, getting on the back line, it, there, it could be a really good fight coming up. Yeah, there could be a fight, a really good fight coming up, but you know, Zeo's positioning has been great thus far. If he gets caught one time, they are going to just get deleted. Old school doing a pretty good job. One of the, the big power spikes we see, of course, for the Idris is getting that broken myth out. And he's really, well, I, was, I didn't look into his, into his bank account there. No, he actually has enough money to purchase it. I was going to say, just looking at his items, he was kind of far away. Immense yeah, he just picked it up right now, collected. Humanist. And uh, that gold miner action went over to Tribe. So that's going to increase their gold lead. But still, this could be anybody's game. If Old School gets in there, he's going to be able to ramp up these Broken Myth stacks with those Chalk Rims, with those auto attacks. He's going to be doing massive damage. We know how much CP, uh, CP Idris has been uh, affecting these games here in the competitive scene, and it's only going to uh, continue. Yeah, he wants an infusion, but so does T Tigers. I'll be surprised if this fight does break out here in the next few seconds. Both these guys know that they don't have their infusions up and ready to go. Joseph and Gabe Bizzle will hang out, keeping vision on the map. Dienzio immediately just trampolines in. He, he sees an opening, he's just trampoline in, pew, 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 lights him up. The good thing about that uh, trampoline is it has such a low cooldown that he's able to use it to reposition very oh. effectively. John, this is going to be sketchy. Gabe Bizzle's going to boot in here. He's got the Benediction out. Winds up with the Holy Nova. Catches two. T-Tigers, but they turn around. Zeal is just locked on. Can they keep him down? Divine Intervention found. It's not enough. Old School is Shimmer Strikes back. Zeal's trading. He finds the kill. Actually, a dog Zeal got one. Max Green got a T-Tigers on the chase. Just tapping Isle of Joseph. And uh, Joseph is there with the defensive afterburn. But this is going to be the Kraken going the way of Tribe as Zeal stays... Uh, C9. C9. C9? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 
Sometimes you don't see things in the heat of the moment. I was like, man, that was, he's just going to capture this up. No, he's going to take this down for free. This is just uh, their 401k investment. Yeah, if you don't, if you have the Kraken and you don't at least push two turrets with it, it's not a good investment. It's not worth it, right? So it's going to be 500 gold actually just going over to the members of Tribe. Increasing their net worth in this game, their gold lead. Oh, man, Dienzio doing some work here with this weapon power pedal and he just picked up the tyrant's monocle he's going to be able to crit even better now crit even better <laughs> even <laughs> even better crits i'm excited to see how that's going to play out we, we saw at the end of last game was 638 damage coming out on some of those crits like back-to-back -back crits of course i mean you're critting like every time you hit now oh yeah yeah and if he can actually it looks like he's got uh, tier 2 boots there. If he can actually pick up maybe... Uh, I would say journey boots would be good. He's got that weapon infusion, so he's going to do even more damage now. Uh, it, it's it's going to be pretty good for him in this game. We, we have three turrets for the side of C9. Five up for Tribe, and they're spotted out in this bush. See, Tribe pushing their advantage forward. Looks like C9 are ready to fight. Old school, starting to stack up on this broken myth. T-Tiger's boots forward. He's looking for a target. He's looking for old school. But Zio, what's the play? Zio had a trampoline back, but he switches over to Joseph. Divine intervention onto old school. Keeps him alive. Zio's just barely staying alive. He switches over now to Gay Vizzle. Gay Vizzle getting absolutely lit up. Old school doing enough damage? No, nope, not enough. T-Tigers will take him down. They lose Max Green, but that is the ace for Tribe. As they'll march forward with the ace lane minions now. 14 to 9, about 8. 15 minutes into this one, choke point turret's going to go down, and Sean, did Tribe look to just close this one out? So I think they're going. They're going to try at least. We we have the death oh, timer. They're going to split, split the turrets down. They're split it. Tribe are doing it. Man, they're doing oh my it. Goodness. Okay, so you can lose the game 18 to zero and come back and win game two if you get the weapon pedal. Woo! The weapon pedal critting here, finishing off in style. Well done. Despite the repositioning that was happening early game from the side of C9. Dienzio and the rest of Tribe were able to take the game away from them, and now the series is tied up one-to-one. -one. What an exciting match, Humanist. What a phenomenal matchup. I can't believe that I actually